Hello all. In this lecture, we will see about function arguments and also we will see about higher order functions and lambda functions. So, in the previous lecture, we have seen how to use functions. So, we have seen uh, different arguments also. So, in this lecture, we will see how to call functions by using these arguments. So, there are various types of arguments that can be used to call functions. So, we will learn about required arguments, keyword arguments, default arguments, and variable linked arguments. So, how to call a function by using the following types of arguments. So, we will see examples of each type also. First type is required arguments. So, in this required arguments, these arguments are passed to a function in correct positional order. So, order is important. So, if you have two arguments that have to be passed, then the position is important. If the first argument is name and second is age, then that order should be maintained when we pass these values when we call a function. And also, the number of arguments in the function call should match exactly with the function definition. So, if we have three parameters in the function definite definition, so when we call the function also, the number of parameters or number of arguments should be three. So, this is actually required arguments. You will see an example. So, we have a print function and we have one parameter str. It simply prints that string parameter str and it returns a function. So, if you are giving this print function simply without any arguments, without any arguments, then there will be an error because it is missing. If you see the error, it is missing one required positional argument. So, since this function has a uh, parameter and we are not passing any parameters to the function, it, it will return an error message. So, if we are giving print function, hello, how are you, then it is taking this string. So, str, uh, will, uh, that value will be assigned to str, then the print will be work and we will get the output as hello, how are you. So, this is required arguments. Then, second type of arguments is keyword arguments. So, here the caller identifies the arguments by the parameter name. So, here name will be specified. When we call the function, we will specify using the actual name itself. And the advantage is that we can, uh, we can skip some arguments. If we want to skip some arguments, we can skip those arguments. And also, if we want to place them out of order, in the earlier case, we have to place them in the specified order because if the first argument, if the definition, if it is first argument is name and the second one is age, then when we call also that name, comma, age, that order should be maintained. Here we can place in any order. So we will see an example and you will understand. So we have a print function and we have two parameters, name, comma, age. And this function just simply prints the name as name and age as age and it will return. So, if you call this print function, uh, advantage of this keyword is we will specify the name also. Age is specified here. Age equal to 50 and comma name equal to age. Agin. So, if you are calling this function using this keyword argument, so that is why it is known as keyword arguments, we are mentioning, we are mentioning the uh, actual parameter name here itself. So, the advantage is we can change the order of these arguments. Here, uh, name comes first and second is age. But we, when we call, we have specified age equal to 50 and comma name equal to age. Because we can use like this because we are using the name itself. The parameter name itself is used here. Name and age is used here. So, this is known as keyword arguments. So, the output will be name and age will be 50. Now, third type of arguments is default arguments. So, the default arguments assumes a default value. So, if we are not supplying any value to the function when we call, then it will take a default value. So, we will see uh, the print function. Here, when we define this, this is a function definition. So, in this function definition, we have specified two parameters, name and age. And here we have specified a default argument value that is 25. So, if you are not supplying any values when we call this function, 
then it will take this default value the same function only so if you are giving this print function age equal to 50 we can specify in any order because we are specifying the keyword so age equal to 50 comma name equal to age. since we have specified the age so age we won't take, take the default value instead it will take this 50 value and the output will be agile and 50 will be printed but in the second case we are calling the same function and we are specifying only name equal to agile so what happens is the function will be called and when it executes name will be substituted with the agile and age will be 25 because it will take the default value since we have not supplied any value to the function so this is known as default arguments now the fourth type of arguments is variable length arguments so if you are not specifying the number of arguments to process a function for more arguments than specified so in the function we may not specify only one or two arguments if we want to specify more than uh, more arguments then we can use this variable length arguments so it is also called variable length arguments it is not named the arguments won't be named in the function definition unlike this required and default arguments so the required and default arguments will be named in the function definition but here it won't be named so this is a syntax for that variable length argument so the function name will be there so ordinary arguments will be there uh, ordinary parameters will be there which separated by commas and after that we can include a variable arguments tuple and the only thing is we have to substitute with asterisk so you have to start with asterisk and we have to give some name for that variable arguments tuple and you can include any number of statements and return expression you will see an example then you will understand so an asterisk uh, this will be placed before the variable name that holds the value of all non-keyword variable arguments. So these are all keyword arguments. So if we have more than uh, many other values that should be supplied, then we can use this star and some name should be given. So we will learn about tuple later. So tuple remains empty if no additional arguments are specified during the function call. So this will be remain empty if we are supplying only this formal arguments. So this will be empty. So we'll see an example then you'll understand this how this. So uh, I am using the same print function here. I have an argument one, comma. Then I am using a variable length thing star where tuple. Now in the function print output is and uh, print argument will be uh, one will be printed. And inside a for loop, I am printing all the values, all the variable values, that is all the values that is supplied through this tuple will be printed using this function. So as I mentioned, if I, men I am uh, calling this function using only 5, so this 5 will be this argument 1. So only this, these two lines will be executed, since we are su not supplying any variable tuples. So output is 5 will be printed if you are using this print function with only one argument okay now if I am using the print function with more than one argument I am giving a 4 5 6 7 8 so 4 will be for this argument 1 and 5 6 7 8 will be for this variable tuple or variable length argument so everything will be printed so 4 will be printed using this print argument 1 statement and the, all the other variables 5, 6, 7, 8 will be printed inside this loop. 5, 6, 7, 8 will be printed. So this is known as variable length argument. So we will be using an asterisk. So you will be learning about this tuple later. The next topic is lambda function. So lambda functions are anonymous functions because they are not declared in the standard manner by using the def keyword we know that functions are declared using def but lambda function are anonymous functions they don't have this def keyword so we just use the lambda keyword to create small anonymous functions so these are some small anonymous functions which can be substituted anywhere in the program 
so we won't be having the uh, usual syntax for a function so lambda functions can take any number of arguments so any number of arguments can be passed to this lambda function and return but it return just one value in the form of an expression so the return it will return just one value and it will be in the form of an expression it contain commands or multiple expressions will be there and it cannot be a direct call to print because lambda requires an expression there won't be any print statement inside the lambda statement but it's contain only an expression so lambda functions have their own local namespace so lambda functions will take its own variables or all, all the local variables will be used inside that lambda function itself and also it can access variables other than those in the parameter list and those in the global namespace so we'll see this example then you'll understand what is this lambda function so this is a syntax for lambda lambda we can have any number of arguments and call an expression will be there so this is an example for the lambda function so you can leave the sum you, you start from here lambda we will be using keyword lambda then we can have any number of arguments as mentioned earlier where you can have any number of arguments and call an and there will be an expression argument 1 plus argument 2 so what does what does this function do is it will take it will output sum of these two numbers and it will be stored in sum so if you are giving sum of 10 comma 20 then the result will be 30 so this is known as lambda function these are all short functions which contains only expressions there won't be any print statement at all some short expressions small expressions will be there so this is an example for that uh, lambda function here uh, some same function I would use this lambda argument 1 r comma argument 2 and the expression is argument 1 plus argument 2 now you can call sum as a function so if you want to print value of total sum of 10 comma 20 you will get the output as 30 then if you want you can call sum of 20 comma 20 then the output will be 40 so what it does is it will simply call this lambda function and the expression will be evaluated it is 10 plus 20 otherwise 20 plus 20 will be evaluated and it will store in a, an object so this is another lambda function here lambda we take we are giving only one argument one argument is there x and the return expression is x into 2 so it will double whatever element we will pass uh, we pass it will double so and the result will be stored in this double object so if you are calling print the double of 5 then the result will be 10 so it will multiply 5 into 2 uh, equal to 10 so actually this lambda functions are used with higher order functions so uh, what this higher order functions are these higher order functions take one argument as a, a take one argument a, a another function so if we have any uh, number of arguments one of the at least one of the arguments will be a function will be another function that uh, those type of functions are known as higher order functions so we will see example for higher order functions uh, one is filter function so we have a list so we will be learning about list later so this is a list so it contains this number of elements 2 5 4 6 8 13 32 11 now i am using a lambda function x which takes one argument and what it does is it will check whether this is the expression x mod 2 equal to 0 so it will return true if x mod 2 equal to 0 it will return uh, all the even numbers okay so we will store it in some variable mode now this is list we will learn about list later so what does this filter function do is filter to function takes one of the arguments as this as, a, as uh, this lambda function so one of the arguments for this filter function is this lambda function comma and the second argument is a list so it will take uh, first argument as a lambda function and the second argument as that list so what it does is it will filter out all the even numbers from this list and the output will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 32. So this is a filter function and it is converted to a list. That's why it is printed like this. 
So this is the same thing we have written old list is like this and new list. We have written a new list equal to list of filter of this lambda function comma old list. So filter function it's a higher order function. So one of the arguments will be a function will be another function. So filter function in this filter function we have this lambda function as one of the arguments and the second argument is a list. So what it does is it will filter out based on this function. So if you are if you are filtering out based on whether if you are finding out whether it is uh, we have it contains some prime factors we can filter using that prime factor function. So what you have to give you have to give that expression here. And then it is we are printing those new list. Okay, this is known as filter function. So filter function is an example of higher order function, higher order function. And we have other higher order functions also. I'm just showing some examples here. One is map function. So what it does is uh, it 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 also takes a lambda function. What it does is we have this old list value, and if we want to multiply it with 4 all the values should be multiplied with 4 we can use a lambda function to this map function uh, here it takes x as an argument and what it does is expression is x into 4 so it takes the list the old list values will be each of the old list values will be multiplied by 4 and the re result will be returned and stored in a list so here 2 into 4 it is 8 5 into 4 is 20 so in this way we will get the output. So this is known as map, map function. So this is also a higher order function. Then we have reduce function, reduce function. So this is the old list value. So this reduce function, it also takes uh, an a lambda function as an argument and second argument is a list. What it does is it sums up all the values in this list. So for that what we have done is we are passing two arguments x comma y and what it does is it is x plus y so if we give like this it will reduce the whole list as a sum so 81 will be a result so 81 is actually 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus up to 11 so this is known as reduce function so reduce function is also a higher order function because it takes a function as one of its arguments so this is so this is a function this is actually a function and the second uh, argument is a list so this is just to understand how we can use this lambda function so lambda functions are mainly used uh, in in association with this uh, higher order functions okay so these are the references fundamentals of python by Kenneth lambert and i will also reference these two web links thank you